Hey guys, Feeding Frenzy coming to you again from inside the greenhouse. It's the middle of December and we are record breaking temperatures here where I live. It's going to be 75 degrees. It's been 60 degrees at night for the last week. Uh, I've never seen anything like this in my life. So the greenhouse is doing very well. Um, this is kind of going to be like a mixed video. Um, I'm going to show you guys the end result of the rocket mass heater. And I think uh, we've been blessed with this nice weather. I really haven't had to use it that much this year so far. So I'll constantly do updates and tell you guys what I think. Um, when it gets really cold outside, I just haven't had to use it that much yet. Which is actually kind of shocking. But uh, this is pretty much it, guys. And, um, you know, there's, uh, there's plenty of other videos out there to where you can go see. I, I don't really make the videos as I'm working. That's just, um, that's too much for me. So uh, um, I've got plenty of pictures, and um, I'm going to try to upload them to my computer and uh, get you guys uh, some pictures so you can see exactly what went down. Um, I'm better about taking pictures than video. But uh, this is it, guys, and uh, I think it looks great. Um, I, would, I would like to know what you guys think. And uh, just to go over it real quick, if you're unfamiliar with uh, what a rocket mass heater is or what a rocket stove is, uh, you've got a J tube, just picture the letter J, and um, use fire brick, guys. Don't waste your time on anything else, okay? As far as the guts, um, we've got a few regular bricks on top. It's not a big deal. These don't get that hot. So um, where you actually put your fire, you want to make fire brick. Uh, that chimney comes up, or the heat riser, comes up to somewhere right in here. It's about two inches from the top and uh, it gets really good draw once it heats up and uh, then we've got a pipe or a uh, stove pipe running through the bench and uh, you can see here's a clean out and um, you just take this cap off and you can clean it out and just check it and make sure everything's right inside the pipe so you don't have any obstructions for your uh, gases and and heat exchange to you know move throughout the entire system and uh, that's pretty much it guys then you cob it you fill it in you know make it airtight cob it up with your sand clay water and straw and um, you know it, that stuff works pretty well and I got to tell you I did a lot of research on cob you know if you've never used it you you're kind of scared to see what it is and how to make it right you know guys it, it's really different for everybody uh, that's where mathematics are kind of strange I mean they give you a good starting point but everybody's uh, soil or, or should I say clay is different wherever you live in Tennessee we have the best clay on earth uh, it is great building stuff you can't grow anything in it um, but uh, we have just the best clay you can get and you got to go about a foot down into the uh, ground at least a foot maybe two feet uh, to start getting the really good clay that you're gonna need I was lucky enough to where I had all these building materials already here pretty much uh, all these bricks I've got a brick frame around it just so I could have something to build up the cob with and um, but I was lucky enough when I dug out, dug out my sump tank I had all the clay just sitting right there you know a sump tank it was 200 gallons so it's at least two and a half feet down into the ground so and I didn't even know I wanted a rocket mass heater when I was doing that so you know one project leads to another one guys and uh, just because you've got a big old pile of clay sitting around doesn't mean that you can't use it, especially if you get, you know, good cold winters like we do uh, in here in Tennessee. So we get a good balance of hot and a good balance of really cold weather. These winters are getting a little bit more ridiculous, in my opinion, and they're becoming very, very unstable. Like, like I said, um, we're in record-breaking temperatures for the last three days for December. It's been 75 degrees. I mean, it's insane. It's, it's just unbelievable. So... Uh, we got to be prepared if we're wanting to really, um, you know, be successful with our winter growing operation in the greenhouse. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, again, you know, I, I would love to know if you guys think it looks good. Um, you know, as far as it functions, I reassure you, it, it's I've lit about 30 fires in it, and it's performing great. I love it. Um, and I got to tell you, I use a lot of uh, old chopped up pallets. Um, it beats the hell out of cutting down trees. I know there's a there's some chemicals in that wood, um, but you know it's not that bad. Uh, most of that stuff gets burned up inside the heat riser, but I like it. it I think it works great, 
and uh, especially these oak pallets uh, it's just really good wood uh, the rocket mass heater really likes that stuff and um, that's the only drawback by the way um, with these things is you got to baby them for you know anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes to really get them going that's really the only drawback other than that these things are amazing uh, you get your really quick heat out of your barrel and uh, you get the slow warmth of the bench and uh, it can get you through the night you know that's what we're going for I, I've taken a lot of precautions of you know this greenhouse it's a double layered greenhouse it's got one plastic layer and then another plastic layer with about a uh, you know you know anywhere from an 8 to 10 inch uh, insulation with a with a fan you can see the cord is right here and it blows in between the layers that's what that big hump is on the back of the side of the um, of the heat reflecting uh, material and it just constantly pumps air in between the two layers of it so it, uh, there's one precaution uh, the other thing with aquaponics greenhouses is uh, you've got a thermal mass with your water and um, so there's always that I figured I'd go ahead and feed the fish and let you guys see and we'll just kind of slowly go on down here uh, bear with me on this camera work I'm gonna try to get this bag of fish food open here here we go I'll let you guys see the goldfish hopefully they'll show their pretty little faces and uh, th guys I gotta tell you this is kinda why I have the goldfish uh, when these water temperatures get cooler these goldfish are still pretty active um, and that's another reason that I built my system the way I did I like to segregate my fish I've got my tilapia and these two tanks and um, I'm, tr I'm slowly building up my tilapia um, I, I want to take my time with really understanding the breeding uh, part of it and I know that it can get pretty complicated here's some other fish in the biofilter uh, I'm gonna try to get that wire out of your face I hope you guys can see them they, they look really happy they're growing at an incredible rate these fish aren't even a year old and they're they've gotten absolutely massive um, they're great man so that's again guys you'll you'll hear me prom promote the goldfish I know we can't eat them guys but uh, I mean I guess you could uh, if you had to but they they serve the winter operation of your greenhouse and your aquaponics so they're just really good fish to have and uh, and I've learned a lot guys over this whole year and I'm continuing to learn uh, this is my first winter so we're gonna learn all this stuff together and um, I will constantly keep you guys updated on everything and just let you know what I think and how things are working out I think I guess I'll show you guys the plants real quick I'll try to wrap this video up uh, we've got a wonderful tomato here a little bit of a deficiency uh, that's when I sprayed too late in the day and then I stopped myself so that's just a little bit of leaf burn uh, but you can see guys we've got plenty of tomatoes coming in and this is the middle of December and I've never had tomatoes in December so this is uh, quite the feat here uh, I'm gonna try to stick my camera in here and I don't know if you guys can see them but there's some getting ready to be picked look check out the root system guys this thing is just doing so well I've never seen roots growing out of stems I've never seen that uh, it's very interesting um, here's some good tomatoes right here they're, they're gonna be ready soon got some got another big one in there and uh, here's the okra here's a pepper plant like I said a little bit of a magnesium deficiency I put some Epsom salt in there and we should see that clear up in the next I don't know five to seven days I hope uh, this was a cutling off of this tomato plant and it seems to be producing it's actually producing fruit um, it's been in there for about three weeks now and it's doing great I'll let you guys come on down here uh, here's some more tomatoes a little bit of leaf burn that's my fault I sprayed it and I shouldn't have done it that was the wrong time uh, they're looking good they're looking really good uh, we got our broccoli coming in it's looking good uh, this thing I don't know if this thing is growing or not it just kind of stands still uh, so is this one it looks good it just looks like it's standing still like you know nothing's really happening I don't know uh, here's another uh, cutling I took off and it's huge it's doing great uh, those flowers weren't on there the other day so it's actually producing uh, from a cutling it's amazing uh, I got some more peppers coming in here for some reason they're taking forever I guess it's the nitrogen slow down uh, here's the peppers 
Uh, guys, I've had these peppers in here all season long. They're starting to look a little beat up. Um, so, yeah, that's um, they're looking good though. But I mean, I've never seen them look so yellow. And uh, I want to tell you guys a couple of no uh, things that I've noticed is, uh, even though it's December, you know, you still need good circulation in your greenhouse. Um, because back here, it's kind of a dead spot. And I think I'm going to have to put another fan on this corner and get some air circulating back here. I've noticed a little bit of mold on some of the uh, fruit that didn't, you know, go all the way through. So you got to keep your eye out for mold in the wintertime, guys. Uh, in the summertime, it's not too much of an issue because you open up your entire greenhouse and there's just enough air to where it's not a big deal. Um, I've also learned with the hoop houses, plant your bigger things on the inside, keep your smaller things on the back side. That way, uh, you, when your plants get tall, they won't run into the moisture and create uh, mold. I've learned that. So uh, there's a pointer for you guys. Plant all of your tall stuff halfway into the middle of the greenhouse. That way, like this bed, has never I've never seen mold um, on, the, on the fruit or leaves. Um, you can see that I've changed a couple things in here. I've mounted the fans up top, and it seems to really help out quite a bit. Uh, you're just going to constantly update this stuff guys. So that's why I'm trying to cram all this in real quick to attend You know 15 minute videos so that way you don't have to watch a hundred videos on it guys I got to tell you this is the raft bed um, It's starting to get kind of dirty in here. I'm gonna clean this thing up, but uh, Guys you could see the growth that we've had uh, We can't even eat all this salad guys. I mean, it's unbelievable how much lettuce we're producing. We've got some romaine lettuce here uh, some butter crunch lettuce uh, so there's another type. I forgot the name of this one. Uh, that one looks really good right there We've got a tomato growing uh, Like I said, there's that magnesium deficiency a little bit and uh, we, we'll clear that up soon But uh, it's just interesting what I've seen. There's a broccoli. We've got some asparagus It actually takes two years to establish asparagus. So uh, we'll see we'll keep our eye on the asparagus and see what happens um, but I, I really do like the raft system guys. I really do. I think I'm gonna this is just uh, my old sump tank And that's the last thing I want to show you guys is uh, I put a liner in and uh, Sorry, it's kind of messy down here, but I, I put a liner in I took out my old sump tank and I put a liner in and guys I gotta tell you if you're doing a big system and um, You've dug a big hole maximize your hole. Just go get a liner. It's so much better and uh, it's just it's just better um, we had a horrendous amount of rain two weeks ago and uh, it flooded out my my hole and my sump tank so much that it really screwed up my system and uh, that's really my fault uh, nature threw a curveball at me that I uh, thought I was prepared for and I wasn't so uh, that's another reason I got tired of dealing with this um, you can see my rain collection water video it's one of the earlier videos that I've done and um, that backfired on me so uh, I woke up to quite a bit of a mess none of the fish died um, and it just it's just uh, it's, it's amazing what these systems can tolerate uh, it, massive failures and uh, if they're well established and the bigger they are uh, the more mistakes you're allowed to make guys and that's that's really the point is um, you know sometimes we make our own mistakes and that's the beauty in learning from it you're gonna make your system so much better when you learn from your mistakes so definitely get you a pond liner the last thing i want to mention is this ro system guys this thing is awesome um, when my system failed it was really good to have this uh, because I, I don't my fish my whole system would have failed guys if you had to if you had a system failure where your water ran out of your system or something just catastrophe happened with your water or your pump or whatever it might be maybe the electricity went out something happened and if you had to just pump regular carbonated water into your system, that, it would destroy your system. Uh, it would take a major setback. Um, I put about 100 gallons of regular water in just to have some type of buffer in it. Um, I don't like just totally not to have some type of buffer. So I put 100 gallons of regular water in it, and then I constantly filled this thing up. It took a while to get the system back. Um, but I slowly did it day by day and by about the fourth or fifth day I had everything running good and the bacteria recovered everything went well But I got to tell you guys the only reason that I'm saying that this worked is because of this RO system So I have to give thanks uh, to my local hydroponic guy 
and um, and just I'm just so glad that I purchased this because it really did save me and uh, my plants are, are looking pretty darn good we got like I said we got a small magnesium deficiency and um, we just have to wait it out and see what our system's going to tell me to do so that's pretty much it guys I'm sorry to make this video so long I hate making long videos like this but I feel like it's necessary when there's a lot of updates that need to be made versus making you know five or six videos so I tried to cram that in for you hey guys I want to say thank you for all your subscriptions thank you for your comments thank you for clicking on my videos it really does mean a lot to me I hope I'm helping you guys I hope I can help you understand your systems and uh, answer your questions truthfully and honestly in the best way possible because again I'm not an expert uh, I've just had quite a bit of experience under my belt and that's what I want to say guys is that the more experience you have the more days that you go outside and deal or in, even inside with your aquaponics system guys you should be learning something every single day whether it be about your bacteria your fish your plumbing uh, your plants just whatever it is guys you I hope you're learning something every time you step out there and uh, check on your system this stuff is so addicting and uh, it's just a lot of fun when you when you uh, build it right and uh, you slow down and you really try to understand each part of your system and how it all operates uh, in unison so again uh, tell me what you think about the rocket mass heater guys and just overall I would love to know um, I hope again I hope this channel is helping you I just want to say thanks again and uh, keep building your systems, keep feeding your fish, and keep enhancing your lives. And I'll see you on the next video.